Hi everyone and welcome to the Swiftcase Productivity Podcast. My name is Adam Sykes, founder of Swiftcase, the professional productivity platform. And today I've got with me... Oh, we've been developing Swiftcase. So, so there's only, only two of us today yeah. because Alkis is busy working away in the office on some important programming that needs to get finished. Mm-hmm. So uh, you've just got us two, I'm afraid. But today we were going to talk about um, something that's been quite topical yeah. uh, recently, which is the subscription model versus license fee debate yeah. for the BBC. And also, I suppose, what the BBC means to us and to the, to, to the nation. <laughs> yeah, well, I, mean, I, I remember uh, always when, uh, when I was a student and we moved out into accommodation, like that one of the first questions people asked was like about this license fee, whether you should pay it. You know I mean? Because there was always a debate about whether we watch enough TV. Um, but this was like 20 years ago. And we always ended up coming down the side of, yeah, we would pay it because we watched all the terrestrial channels. Because mm. um, there was really no other alternative at the yeah. time. The internet was kind of in its infancy. I don't even think we had it. Yeah. But now, 20 years later, I'm not sure that's the case anymore. That yeah. people are actively or even passively watching um, the terrestrial channels. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I yeah. just I think and now it's, it's coming to a head. Because people are paying for other services and they don't think they get a comparable level of service for them. Yeah. Do they? No. I think, that, well, I think the problem with this issue for me is there's so many conflicting reasons behind yeah. the, the issue over the license fee. Yeah. So I've always been a long time um, opponent of the license fee. Mainly not because the reason that are coming up now, I I just think it's the wrong model for paying for it because it depends on what you see the BBC as. And I think this is what people are coming up with different arguments to defend it now. So you you get the value argument, which Mm. is the big one that they go on is, look at all these things that you get by paying your license fee. You get all these radio stations that you don't listen to. You get all these TV (laughs) channels that you don't watch. Websites. Uh, You get a website that you don't really use either. Oh, I use all the time. But do you know what I mean? (laughs) If you use it, it's great. If you don't use it, you can't use that as value. It's like saying, you know, look at all this stuff that you don't want to buy, but you still need to pay for it because mm. some of the people might want to buy it. In any other situation, that would be mm. ridiculous. But in the BBC, that model seems to have stuck. Uh, now, I know there's people who don't like the BBC, which is part of the reason why it's come to a head now, mm. over some, some kind of bias that they see. I see and right. and there, there, is, there is an issue with the BBC and its balance, which is a, is a separate issue for me. And I think they do need to solve that because yeah, yeah. the idea of there's two sides of an argument. So balance is we have, we represent both sides equally when sometimes on the likes of climate change, it's kind of 99.99% of yeah. one yeah, yeah. and the range of people yeah. who don't like scientific, you know, yeah. who research. Yeah. And then the BBC come along and put them, give them equal weighting. Yeah, yeah. Then that, I can see why that annoys people. Yeah. And the same with, you know, we've had politics where, there seem to be pro one side or, you know, in yeah. politics, it seems odd because I don't think they're biased in that they favor left or right, but they do seem to favor extremes. So for example, with the, yeah, yeah. with the politics, Nigel Farage what has been on there? BBC yeah. question time yeah. far more than any other MEP. Yeah. And if you look at the MEP breakdown, cause the argument was he's got all these MEPs. He doesn't like Europe and he doesn't think we should have MEPs, but you know, yeah. he's an MEP and he's got all these these MEPs, so he should have it. But when you compare his share to Greens, the Greens are hardly ever on. Mm. So the, there never seemed to be a reasoning why he was on lots other than he's a, or he's a, well, either cronyism yeah. or he's a character that gets viewed. Yes, yeah, so, well, isn't which that going to be the case in a, in a commercial? So if it became a commercial thing though, wouldn't that be even more exaggerated? Potentially, yeah, yeah. but then, I suppose my concern is, well, there were twofold. First, I don't like the model because I think, you know, if you're not watching it, why should you pay for it? Yeah. Which is the first one. And that's if you consider that the BBC is there as a service, you know, for uh, the same as Sky, Netflix. Well, Sky, Netflix, you know, if it's equivalent to them, Mm. then I think the license model is wrong. Mm. Because if you don't watch it, why do you pay? Mm. I think that's fair. I think then we move on to the, the, I suppose, 
the idea that is the BBC something more mm-hmm. than just channels? Mm-hmm. And I don't mean it's got radio stations as mm-hmm. well, yeah, yeah. but it, it, does it mean more to the nation? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's mm-hmm. where I think the arguments at the moment are getting confused. Yeah. yeah. So when you're talking about soft power a bit, like we advertise ourselves about the British nation yeah. to the rest of the world, and we kind of brand ourselves. So, for instance, by Top Gear, yeah, it was a massive success internationally, and in a way, went towards sort of branding, you know, us as a nation yeah. as being, you know, potentially a country of uh, the three types of characters. You know yeah, I mean? like, and, and I think, um, and that comes with it, both its positives and its negatives, obviously. Yeah, um, but obviously, you know, th- there's revenue from that, isn't there? Because they yeah. then sell that. Nice yeah. license it, whatever. So uh, there's an argument made that there could be some profitability from it, yeah. as well as branding. Well, I think BBC yeah. does make money outside of there you go, outside yeah. the license yeah. fee, and, all, and always has done. Yeah. I think that's not not. So yet. they could just gear more towards that, and then make a subscription. Yeah, rather than not a license. But I think the license is there because of the inherent difficulty when they could see for the BBC of tracking who was doing what. So license fee is just like a hangover from a bygone era and they could do other technology to kind of have a subscription model whereby you can sign in, go on the web and pay like a pound. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think, I suppose in the past, the license fee was a subscription model because not exactly. everyone had a TV. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, so there, was, there yeah. were more people who didn't have a TV, yeah. so was, didn't pay the license. It was either or, wasn't it? So, you, yeah. you know, whereas now there's lots of people who might have a TV as a viewing device but then they switch it on and they immediately click Netflix yeah, exactly. or Amazon yeah. Prime. Should you pay because it comes on the BBC one for three seconds? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, or, or Sky, you know, Virgin, yeah. BT. You know, yeah. there's loads of other options now, but that wasn't the case. So in the past, it was really, you did only get what, two channels, one, yeah. one channel originally, yeah. but then up to like, say, four channels and then by the 90s, five yeah. channels. Yeah. Yeah, so like then in that period, then you could see why you either did have a TV or you didn't. But yeah. now there's so many other options that just doesn't work. Yeah. And if you go to the soft power argument, if you look at soft power and also education and culture, well then isn't that part of you know general shouldn't that be part of general taxation? Yeah. Because it's a service that everyone enjoys. Yeah. Why do the people who don't pay the license fee get the benefit of our soft power around the world? Yeah. That doesn't seem to make sense. <laughs> yeah. And it's also, yeah. it's a poll tax. Everyone pays the same. Yeah. So, it you know, if you can't afford it, £150 or whatever it is yeah, for a license, yeah. that, that's a lot of money to some people. Mm-hmm. And if it was under general taxation, they'd probably pay a very small mm-hmm. or to, to nothing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the older people's license, the pensions license, which they were saying is a big issue now. Yeah, people, you know, if that was under general taxation, again, they wouldn't be paying and other people would be pay, contributing more to it. Yeah. So it just seems like the, the way that it's, it's either it's, a, it's an entertainment service, in which case it should be going up against Sky, Netflix and whatever. And then people would either pay it if they want to watch Mrs. Brown's Boys <laughs> or, or not pay it. Not I mean, my view is if they scrap Mrs. Brown's boy, they might even be shifted a <laughs> yeah, little yeah. bit. Straight away, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're one of the things that, like, um, Top Gear, le- losing Top Gear, yeah. that was one that of the things that death, was a yeah. bit, big, big thing for me yeah. because I think that was probably the only program I still watched on, on the BBC before it moved to Amazon Prime and was actually the reason I got Amazon Prime Amazing. originally yeah. was, was to watch to watch the Grand Tour, so I mean. People use uh, Attenborough. I think when David Attenborough goes, I think that's gonna be another death knell yeah. for the BBC, because it's literally the other example yeah. of why uh, the BBC is, is a powerful good, because they simply, you simply don't get world-class documentaries on dry subjects mm. through commercial. But are they dry though? Would, this, this is an issue I have with the BBC generally and this idea that the BBC only makes these programs so you know if the BBC wasn't there we wouldn't get these mm. programs but why did they get millions of, of viewers no, why does David Attenborough's Blue yeah. Planet yeah. And, and those different series get so many viewers mm. if, it's, if it was on another channel it if it was on ITV yeah. they'd love to have that and get all those viewers yeah. and the, the ad revenue from from that um, yeah. particular series but um you know, but so I think so the argument is see how that works. That the nature of commercial TV always transforms the product to some degree. So, yeah. so that the somehow there's checks and balances with the BBC that 
probably are actually they're from traditional power structures mm. and say, oh no, we, we can't mess with this too much. We can't think about what people want to see. We need to mm. edge them. Whereas that sort of like the drive to do something for somebody's sake has uh, is missing from commercial revenues because they're just thinking, well, what's going to get more eyeballs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think Channel Four. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, Channel point, Four yeah. does very well. Yeah. With you know, it's Channel Four dispatches. Yeah, yeah. You know, good point. Yeah. You know, there are programs on. There are documentary, and actually, it's quite a few documentaries. There mainly seems to be US based at the moment. There's quite a few documentaries on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they are quite, they, they have a go at the food industry, they have a go yeah. at the health industry, the drug industry, you know, so they're not, you know, they're not shying away. There's The Great Hack, yeah, who's yeah. on Netflix. I still haven't seen it, actually. I haven't. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, but, but just you, like the Attenborough ones. Yeah. You, I haven't seen them. I, I, don't, <laughs> exactly. I don't particularly enjoy nature yeah. programs. And, so, yeah. I mean, so I, I'm, not, I'm not really a fan of anything with the BBC. Yeah. They are of, exquisitely shot from a kind just, of pure aesthetic sense. Yeah. Like, even though not I mean, my thing. they're just beautiful, but... I love the environment, just yeah. can't, I just find them tedious. Yeah. I think, well... I, I like Only Connect. That's yeah. the only program I watch on BBC still is at yeah. Only Connect. And I'm not sure whether, when that's not on for, you know, that's however many months there. of the year, yeah. whether I'd want to pay the subscription. <laughs> How much would you pay just to watch Only Connect then? That, that's what it comes down I don't think I would. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think if there was one program, yeah. I don't think I'd pay the subscription. Yeah. I think you'd have to use it significantly, wouldn't you? You, you do find that if you're not watching Netflix, one, one program, two programs a week. You'd start thinking I'll, you'd start yeah, thinking yeah. I'll leave it for this month and have yeah. a few months off. Because I, I do find that with Netflix and Amazon Prime, there's like there'll be a few good series, then there'll be like a, a break. So you do need to switch between a couple of yeah. services. Um, until the new, cause you can binge watch, so you can get through yeah. a series yeah, quite quick. Course. Whereas with BBC, yeah. it's generally apart from a I few. I think they go to that one aren't they? Because the things generally tend to stay on for like thirty days or whatever, yeah. and then disappears. But I think that they're looking to transform into a more. And the thing is, the more they get the gravity of Netflix and Amazon Prime pulls them into that, the more they're going to have to move over to that. But I, I just think there's a yeah, like you say, there's a people. Some people want to get rid of BBC altogether, not because of that reason, but they'll maybe leverage that. That's reason. what I mean. There's a kind of a combination of coming together of the the referendum coverage yeah. and subsequent coverage. People on both sides didn't like it. Yeah. There's the political general political bias and and things yeah. that people got an issue with. There's the Netflix argument that's kind of come into it yeah. as well. So there's kind of, they're not all fighting on the same lines. And some of the people, this is where I, I'm torn now because I've always been against it on the the argument yeah. of the Netflix yeah. argument. Yeah. But the idea that it's being used to leverage the political bias yeah, yeah. and political oversight. I'm not I'm not so sure how much of an impact it actually exactly. has when people don't watch it. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. young people don't watch it, how yeah. much of an impact it having? Yeah. People who read the Daily Mail and the Express, mm-hmm. are they really changing their opinion because they've yeah. seen one you know, you know, a few BBC news items. I'm not sure it does yeah. have the impact that people are making out that it does. Mm-hmm. That it doesn't really change our national conversation. Most people just think it's biased. Or also yeah. a lot of people now think it's biased, not maybe not most people. Yeah. A lot of people think it's biased. So what impact is it having really? Mm-hmm. And are we just getting concerned about it's a bit like the royal family, family, isn't it? It's a bit like arguments are made for like getting rid of the royal family and keeping them. And it's always about the commercial interests, mm-hmm. the traditional reasons. Because, mm-hmm. uh, there's just even questions about our identity to ourselves. Yeah, You know, the royal family gives people an identity uh, in their minds mm-hmm. that just spans their... And I think the BBC is the same thing. It's an institution. It's an institution, isn't that it? That has m- meaning beyond what it can be sort of like commercially or politically be used for. And I think that's why it's a bit of a hot potato because people are just going to want to keep it because they just don't like change fundamentally. Yeah. You know, and again, with uh, the referendum and Brexit and things like that, is it a good time to break away from the BBC because people are... Yeah, I think that's what I mean. There's more of a a, a state of turmoil that people might regret going forwards and, you know, (laughs) I might be forced to pay more. Do you know what? I might just get rid of my TV area and stop paying yeah. the license. Well, I'll stay off. So, yeah. uh, so it's like a case where I'm going to have to pay someone to put it, put it up properly. So yeah. I'm just not do it. Just not, yeah. not, bo- not bother with it. And yeah. once once this season of Only Connect finishes. <laughs> so, <laughs> <It'll never> finish. <laughs> so 
let yeah. us know what you think about the BBC and the license fee. Drop your comments down below about what, what you think about this debate. Yeah, yeah and if you uh, like the idea of subscription model in general, you can come and subscribe to a fantastic piece of software at Swiftcase swiftcase.co.uk, but if you want to subscribe to uh, some brilliant points of view and <clears throat> fantastic information, then go to at swiftcase.uk and on, on all the um, social media. Yep, and subscribe to this channel oh, of course. to see more of these channel, podcasts. Yeah. Which isn't on the BBC website, yeah. <laughs> okay, so thanks very much for listening to the Swiftcase Productivity Podcast, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.